So not too long ago, St. Ignatius Orthodox Press gifted us with the Anthologian, which was, in my opinion, and still is, probably one of the finest uh, prayer books of the modern age. It's got everything one needs to perform just about every service under the sun, within reason, at home, uh, you know, the Anthologian, everything in this thing. And it's a big boy, it's Chonker. Uh, the second edition, uh, of course, now uh, has some corrections. That being said, this, for all its 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 worth, uh, is a chonker. Okay, it's a big boy to carry around, and uh, not everyone uh, wants to have a satchel. So, what does St. Ignatius Orthodox Press do? Well, they drop us a little prayer book recently, huh? <laughs> Cute little bugger. Uh, and what's more is uh, they drop two. The difference? Modern English, traditional English. I'm a fan. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Orthodox Review, the most uneducated educational program here on the internet today. I'm your host, the guy with one and a half thumbs. And as always, I'm so very, very happy to have you all with us today. Uh, before we get into the video, uh, just a reminder, links below for Patreon, PayPal, Smoke Signals, Cash App, and a Partridge in a Pear Tree. Also, there will be links to these fine products. Uh, all right, that's it. Enough of that. Let's get into it. So, as stated in the introduction, we have the Anthologian uh, from earlier this year, late last year. It's superb. It's phenomenal. It's everything and a bag of chips. That being said, it's a big boy. Let's set it aside for a bit, huh? Let's look at the prayer book from St. Ignatius Orthodox Press. Uh, we have traditional and modern English iterations of said prayer book. Everything in these prayer books is derived from the Anthologian, all excerpted through there. So that's the Ephraim Lash translation. Uh, the difference in the two here would be you, your versus the thou and uh, King James version of scriptural quotes. So we're going to go with the modern English because that is the one I like. <laughs> Uh, there's literally uh, no other difference between the two. Um, beautiful cloth-bound books, uh, about the size of Little Red, or even the uh, New Rome Press uh, Travel Edition. Uh, we're going to be doing a shootout on pocket prayer books, so keep an eye out for that. But at any rate, okay, so here we go. Uh, 2022 St. Ignatius Orthodox Press, you know that, hey, this thing is only $11.95. I mean, that's like two gallons of gas. <laughs> anyway, uh, this first edition is a, a print of 1,000 copies each, so snap them up. Uh, the editor, as always, is the reader, Don Dyke, John Dykstra, John Dykstra. The editor, as always, is the reader, John Dykstra, uh, oversight by David DeYoung, the mastermind behind both St. Ignatius Orthodox Press and Legacy Icons. Hi, David. And, uh, yeah, cloth-bound, sewn binding. It's about three and a half by five inches, 136 pages. Um, and we can go ahead and compare this now to the Anthologian in construction. You've got the same heavyweight fiber paper uh, for the inside. Um, the typeset is about the same. The paper is pretty sturdy. Uh, according to the website now, the paper is the same weight or same kind of paper as uh, other books in their uh, library, that being the, uh, the Holy Apostle, the Gospel book, and the Prophetologian. So it's uh it is, it's about that weight. And so it's 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 gonna take a lick in 
and keep on ticking. Anyone who gets that reference is probably my age or older. Uh, let's take a look at the binding here. Not much to write home about aside from the fact that it's built like a battle tank. Right? Uh, it doesn't exactly lay flat. Um, this came in the mail last night. <laughs> and so, so it's not even broken in yet. But as you can see, uh, the binding itself will lay pretty flat with the minimum of break-in. And as you fan the pages out to, to break them in, they'll be, they'll be just fine. It'll be great. Uh, the same icon of Christ we find in the Anthologian. Uh, single color. That's all right. No problem. Uh, right off the bat, you got four pages in the back for... Uh, you can write down some names in there for prayers. All right. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. Uh, so the first thing you'll notice, uh, the morning and evening prayers, pretty short rule, Trisagion, the uh, hymns to the Trinity, Triparian, prayer of thanksgiving, and the dismissal. And of course, uh, here may be added Psalm 50, the creed, additional morning prayers, and any other personal prayers. And then you have the usual dismissal. Um, this is where the rule of St. Pacomius would come in, which can be found later on in the book. Uh, you have the traditional additional morning prayers, and it'll be the same with the evening prayers after the fact. The, uh, the only uh, prayer that is not in here that you will find usually in uh, most Slavic traditions is the sixth prayer uh, from St. Basil the Great, or seventh prayer actually, I guess it would be, uh, which is typically found in Saturday Midnight Office. But that's, that's a story that we've gone over in many, many different videos. So uh, we have prayers during the day. Now, usually when you think prayers during the day, you're thinking, okay, you know, eat, work, what have you. No, these are actually just the prayers of the hours that, uh, that you would usually find during the canonical hours. So it's good. Prayer for any time, which uh, should be familiar to anyone who's been at church during the hours or read the hours themselves. Prayers at the table, and then your evening prayers. And again, uh, after the evening prayers, you have the additional prayers, which are the ones that in, uh, I guess, more Slavic tradition books you would find uh, in the middle of the evening prayers. And again, these are all the same exact prayers you can find scattered throughout the Anthologian, just here in a much easier and more comfortable format. Prayers for various needs. Now, there are a few prayers of note that I think are worth pointing out in this particular prayer book. And not that they're uncommon prayers, but I think they're prayers that don't get a lot of attention. So, the first being on page 36, offering of the fruits of labor. Now, in just about every prayer book known to us in the English language, you have prayers before and after work. Uh, we are constantly told that we should offer our works unto God as a, a sacrifice. And so here it is, offering the fruits of labor. Lord, as you have commanded us, we offer to you of your own good things. Graciously accept these fruits of our labor as you accepted the offering of the widow according to her ability. Grant us an abundant harvest of blessings in this world and of your eternal treasures in the world to come. Amen. Uh, again, not... Not a prayer that you wouldn't find anywhere else, but it's uncommon, and I think it's a, I think it's a fine addition. Uh, the next one would be a prayer for the love of enemies. Uh, I'm a huge fan of praying for enemies. Um, in fact, we did an episode 10 million years ago on praying for our enemies in quite a few different iterations of these prayers. They can be found in uh, various prayer books. On page 45... And I think this one uh, will be great for all you parents. It's for troubled children. Um, you got a rowdy teenager? Here's your prayer. On page 48, we have uh, for the church mission. I think, uh, I think it's just fantastic. And then after this prayer, uh, you find some prayers that uh, you will also hear in the Divine Liturgy. Uh, prayers of the catechumens, etc. 52, 
Uh, one that is near and dear from my, to my heart is uh, the prayer for the homeless. Uh, I've been homeless. It's not fun. I don't recommend it. Lord, have mercy on those who are homeless. Um, and then I think this one, again, this, this one's kind of uncommon. And actually, I, I can't remember who it was that did a, a video on this recently, but it's, it's for the unbaptized departed, uh, to the holy martyr Barris. Uh, you know, people that, um, children, the infants, that the, the poor little infants that die uh, maybe in childbirth or through miscarriage or just uh, SIDS, that sort of thing. A great prayer to have. Um, now, I do have one tiny, tiny, minuscule little gripe about this book. And it's not really a gripe. It's just a matter of personal preference. I would have liked to have seen the prayers on entering the church and the prayers before the holy icons that uh, you would find in Little Red, but those will fit on an index card, which you can easily slip into this sucker. So no harm, no foul on that. Um, page 96. Let's get back here. Um, we have a whole section on holy confession, and uh, I'll say it again, working on a book on Holy Confession and Praying for the Departed, this is a lovely uh, addition to this book. And you have an examination of conscience that goes through. It's pretty thorough. Um, murder and magic. Those are things that people don't think a lot about. But yet here they are because there are ways in our mind that we can, uh, as the prayer says, uh, through uh, knowledge or ignorance, may participate in these things. And so... That, I think, is a great thing to have in there. And you know what, folks, and I'm, I'm one too, a constant or at least regular examination of conscience is a blessing. And finally, uh, a fun little tidbit, especially for uh, newly illumined people or that just maybe want a little more insight into it, there is a small section on the fasting discipline of Wednesdays, Fridays, and Eucharistic fast. And then, of course, uh, other fasting days. Uh, we're in the middle of the Apostles' Fast right now. Uh, today's the 26th. So the Feast of uh, Saints Peter and Paul uh, is this upcoming Wednesday, the 29th, and then we can start eating meat again. Yay! But uh, anyway, at any rate, uh, so, and of course, feasts, etc., and that little section for uh, names for commemoration. What a cool little book! Uh, it came out of nowhere. There was no big hoopla announcement. Um, an email went out stating, okay, here's something new. Uh, a couple days before, someone on the Discord had said, hey, check this out. I, I was completely oblivious to it. David, you're supposed to let me know these things. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks to Knot and Noose for sending me uh, these copies for review. And uh, they will be cherished and used quite a bit. Uh, again, eleven ninety five plus shipping. It's they're great. They're fantastic little prayer books. Someone was asking me this morning after liturgy, "Hey, um, you know, we're in an area where uh, we don't have an Orthodox church, and we'd like to pray the Tipico. What's a good one?" I was like, "Hey, here you go. You know, you, you don't want to spend forty on an Anthologian. Um, that's cool. Spend twelve on one of these guys. You're in good hands. That's it. Short, sweet, and simple." Not much to it. All right, it's Sunday. I'm going to um, get going here and uh, leave you to it. Uh, Sally Forth, sell, buy them out. Buy them out, folks. Let's buy them out. Let's show David our love and everyone over there at uh, St. Ignatius Orthodox Press and Legacy Icons, who we do love dearly and have been great friends to the show. And uh, I don't care what you think. I think they're doing great work here with publishing. Looking forward to their Mount Athos Psalter coming out. Uh, that's enough rambling out of me. On behalf of Spooky Cat, her mother, and myself, please, 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 please continue to pray for us. We're trying to pray for you. Don't forget, everyone, to do as Father Thomas Hopko's loving grandmother said. Go to church. Say your prayers. And remember God. God bless. Oh.